It is estimated that two-thirds of the Earth's surface is water, so abundant it is everywhere. Who would have imagined a day when a bottle of water would cost more than a soft drink? Underground aquifers that took years to fill are now running dry. A world without water is a world without life. You are watching Our Environment, Our Future. I'm your presenter, Ruth Benzuitola, and our focus on the program today is water resource management. Life as we know it would be impossible without fresh water. In Zambia, the major sources of water include lakes, rivers, and underground aquifers. As a limited resource, fresh water is under immense threat from such activities as pollution and over-extraction because of the ever-growing demand. if we've got water shortages, it will now make people to resort themselves into now start taking water from wells, which will now expose us highly to contagious diseases. Water is not only a need, it is in fact a human right. It was first recognized as a human right by the United Nations General Assembly and has gone on to be recognized by international law. Therefore, governments are obligated to ensure that their citizens have access to clean and safe water. In the water sector, we have Bungosco, which is National Water and Sanitation Council. We've got WAMA, which is the Water Resource Management Authority. We've got local authorities and various other partners, the local government, Minister of Health. So normally what we do is we work with these stakeholders because for any information as we try to manage this resource or indeed any other resource in the environment, we cannot do it alone. We need other partners. So to manage this water, we need to work with this. We actually do work with stakeholders so that one of the aspects we do is to sensitize the public. When you are talking about access to water supply and sanitation, we are talking about uh, about 86% in terms of water supply and about 63% uh, in terms of uh, sanitation. However, I think uh, we've reflected and also there's been a number of uh, interventions coming from different uh, uh, partners and stakeholders that uh, we need to also get into the rural uh, water supply and sanitation. And so we've uh, developed a framework now to try and regulate uh, rural water supply and sanitation and also on-site uh, sanitation. I think there are a number of challenges. Uh, the issue of climate change, I think, is real. And uh, we are experiencing uh, you know, stress in terms of the water resource. Uh, it all tells us that we may need to see how we efficiently use our resource uh, so that uh, it is available uh, for use uh, tomorrow. But also, the utilities are coming from um, you know, a place when uh, water uh, was not considered as a commercial good. And you know, you have a situation where people would want to have it as a free commodity. 
and so they have challenges at times collecting abuse once they've provided uh, water and so that has an impact in terms of our service uh, provision. We also, we also have um, uh, the challenge uh, in terms of uh, I think people appreciating the value uh, for water. You'd see that a number of people leave t taps you know you know just running and the what is called and accounted for water is quite high. And that simply means that uh, maybe we are not paying attention to the value of water. In fact, someone said uh, water is the blue god. Uh, we should be looking at water as something that is valuable. And I think we should be able to conserve. So the other issue that we've seen is that I think we can use water more efficiently. Um, there are areas where people don't have access and then you find water flowing, water being used to wash cars, whether that is treated. Again, that all shows that uh, we may need to reflect in terms of how we uh, consider water. The Zambian government is working towards fully realizing the human right to water. However, there are a number of challenges. It is very difficult to change the people's mindset, more so that everyone thinks Zambia has plenty of water. But that is not the case. How plenty is plenty? Does anyone know? I don't think so. Yes, when we started the 1949 our at independence, we were about 3.5 million people. Of course, then there was a lot of water, and uh, no wonder the act didn't even look at groundwater. But how many are we today? Most of us work in silos, especially from uh, the government side. You find that uh, uh, planning authorities who work on their own, find an area, demarcate it into plots, 20 by 30. Then on the other hand, you see Minister of Agriculture identify an area, degazette it from a, for being a forest and create a farming block. The same with uh, other planning authorities or entities, you find the, you, you have a piece of land which is supposed to be a Richard zone. It is uh, turned into a hive of activity, construction, a shopping mall or a mount facility zone. So for water quality, what we have seen, I think even from the Zambia environmental management perspective is water pollution. It reduces the available resource for use for various activities. So the challenges that we face as a country with regard to groundwater is pollution itself. And by pollution I mean contamination of the water, contamination of the resource. Uh, by contamination of pollution we mean making it unfit for human consumption or indeed unfit for other purposes that it is intended to be used. Even in sometimes the uh, uncoordinated use and over abstraction, you find that uh, this resource is finite. It's not that we have this resource uh, which cannot finish, no. The resource is limited. And when you look at our population, it is increasing every day. So sometimes if we abstract uh, too much, maybe within a small, a small space, uh, there are a lot of housing units, so it can even be commercial, whatever, industrial. Each one has a borehole and they over abstract. By abstraction, I mean each one digs and then you, you pump out. You may find that the resource will get a little and little, so that at one point even the balls, the walls might dry up. Over abstraction, competing uses, unsustainable development and pollution have one common factor, and that is human beings. Our economic growth and population increase have driven water demand for municipal supplies, industrial use, livestock and irrigated agriculture. All this, coupled with pollution, has a number of effects on our environment. There is no food security or energy security without water security. So we need now to look at what are the impacts that our uncoordinated plans or land use have on the resource. What impact does the cutting of trees have on the resource and what impact does the development and degeneration or degradation of the headwaters have on the resource.
water is used for various purposes, so including groundwater. Yeah. So if the water is contaminated or polluted, other than just the human beings getting sick, it will be unfit for other purposes. For instance, one of the purposes we use water is recreation. If we get that water and want to put in a swimming pool, it will be smelling because of the contamination. For instance, if it's contaminated with, it can be chemicals, it can be sewage, it will be unfit for, not just for drinking, but for, not fit for recreation. If you want to clean your house, your, or whatever item at home, and then the water is smelling, it will not be fit for that purpose. If you want to wash your clothes, and the water is contaminated, it will not be fit. So for any other purpose, that, that water will not be fit. Even for agriculture, that is why our experts in agriculture they will tell us that, no, you cannot use this water for agriculture because maybe it has too much chlorides or any other substances that may render it unfit for to grow that particular type of crop. We are striving to implement the Water Resources Management Act itself. So you know how the law works is that uh, first government or ministry gives you their policy, which is just outlining what they want to achieve, desires and goals then that is reduced to a, an act or legislation which is enacted by parliament. But even then, you still need regulations to operationalize that piece of legislation. So it is now these regulations which will now talk about monitoring and enforcement and how you actually do the implementation. A good example is for the boreholes. The regulations spell out how you are going to apply for a new borehole and what is going to happen with the old existing boreholes and what are the distances between a borehole and a borehole or potential pollution sources and things like that. So that is the regulation. So when you look at the Water Resources Management Act, there were about 64 instances which required regulations to be promulgated, but these have since been reduced to uh, eight. So the three new SIs that we released in uh, March 2018 are just three out of the eight that need to come out. But it's not to make people fear. The other SI would be basically to officially delineate Zambia's six catchments so that they are enshrined in the law. Then the other one would, would talk to establishing the catchment councils, sub-catchment councils, and the water users. So those are the things that we are doing to actually operationalize and manage. But I want to emphasize on the water users. It is giving the power and the mandate to the users, the people themselves, to govern the way the resource is supposed to be used, as used in a given locality. We are also um, working with various government departments to bring to the fore the idea that water should be treated as management of water as the basis of running business or our economy. Government and regulatory authorities are only one side of the solution. Some businesses and industry, such as Foxdale Court and Mamba Calories, have set up initiatives and technologies that help preserve our water and maximize use. The building that you are seeing over there is our industrial wastewater treatment plant. Uh, all the water that comes, the, the wastewater, all the effluent from whatever operations comes into the chambers, then it's pumped into the treatment uh, plant. Once it's treated, it see the water goes, the treated water goes into the central monitoring basin, which is good quality water. From there, we pump it out. Now we use the water to green or to water our greenery or our, our, our lawns and part of it we use it for dust suppression. So during the rainy season we collect the, the water from the roof, we store it in tanks, we have five 12,000 litre tanks and we use that water for toilet flushing and um, 
and also for the gardens. Um, we also have a sewage treatment plant at Foxdale Court. So we, we collect the sewage water through our septic tanks and soakaways. Um, and then we have, we have a very simple system um, where we, we purify it using an ozonator. It's a, it's a machine that pumps oxygen into, into the water, which are located in, in two large tanks. Um, and the oxygen breaks down the bacteria and, and, and then we add a little bit of chlorine to, to the water and then we, we use that, that sewage water or that purified sewage water for our garden irrigation. So we, we irrigate the, the lawn at night with, with that water. During the rainy season, um, we, have, we often complain that there's, often there's too much rain, there's flooding, there's you know, vehicles getting, getting stuck and we're all complaining about that. Then come, come October, we're crying about the, the lack of water and the, and the shortages. But if we are more intelligent about it, you can collect that rainwater during the rainy season, collect it in tanks, um, and, then, and then after the rainy season, you then use that rainwater for, um, for, for several months um, after, after the rain, rainy season has, uh, has, has, has ended. So it, it, it just it makes, it makes a lot of sense. Indeed, it does make a lot of sense. As Zambians, there is need for us to get involved and the government has put in place measures to facilitate our participation. There are several things that uh, community members can do. After all, we are partners in development. So at, starting from a community level, we are discouraging the use of uh, shallow wells. We are also discouraging the use of uh, pit latrines. People should ende in endeavor. Of course, we understand uh, uh, the many challenges that uh, different families may have but we are discouraging the use of a pit latrine for obvious reasons. A pit latrine will not uh, properly soak the water into the ground, and then it can contaminate the groundwater, which other people might depend on for various other purposes. So that activity we are discouraging. And then we are also looking at uh, there are various practices, starting from just a home level. You may have a small business at home. Maybe you have a small garden, you have a backyard garage, and then you, you service your vehicle, you get the used oil, and maybe you want to clean some chemicals. So we are advising the public that uh, some of these activities, if you finish your activity, don't just dispose uh, the water into, into the ground. You must ensure that uh, you get permission from either the local authorities, from Zema, or indeed the other regulators like Wam and Wasco for advice. So just that uh, advice will help a lot. If you have a challenge on how you can dispose a certain maybe washings, process water, maybe at a small scale, we invite uh, the public to come to these regulators so that they advise you on how it can be safely disposed. But because if you don't safely dispose, it means you contaminate the same groundwater that you need for other important purposes. It is also the issue of sensitization and uh, lobbying or talking to them to be part of these water use associations once they are formed. Because these associations will operate at that lower level, at the community level. So when these associations are formed, people should be encouraged to come. It, what, the beauty with WAMA is we are even recognizing indigenous knowledge. Even in these new groundwater regulations, people who use divine methods to locate where groundwater is have been included. People who have experience in drilling these wells or boreholes using traditional methods and you know, rudimentary technologies are also recognized and we are going to certify them. Similarly, when it comes to managing the resource at community level, the knowledge that these people have that makes sense and adds value to the management of water resources will be taken on board and if need be captured in what we are going to call the water use association water resource management plans which will now be broken down to an implementation plan as well as an investment plan wastewater treatment smart agriculture rainwater harvesting and management air pollution prevention, water conservation and plastic waste reduction. It is all possible. This is not goodbye because we will be back next week at the same time. You have been watching Our Environment 
our future. I've been your presenter, Ruth Wenzu Witola. Till next time, it's bye for now.